DDR4 or 5? What is better value if you're building a new PC right now? Finally, we finished checking all of Ryzen 7000 processors. And as I said in their review, AMD is now locked on DDR5, while Intel is still supporting DDR4. So we thought it was worth asking and checking again the difference between DDR5 and DDR4. The short answer is if you are buying a new computer right now, in most cases it's better to buy DDR5. And there are some very specific reasons or cases where you can still go and buy DDR4 and it will be worth for you. But let's go into it and let's look at our scenario. We use the 13600K for our testing from the assumption that if you are still considering if you're going to buy DDR4 or DDR5, it's going to be because you're going to build a computer on a budget. So this is not going to be the strongest computer and we're going to take that under consideration. Our DDR4 kit is a 40 kits of 8GB each for a total of 32GB at a speed of 3200 with CL16. And our DDR5 kit is with a 2 sticks of 16GB each at a speed of 5200 with CL38. Again, this is not the best you can get, but it's very good for its budget. What is interesting this time is that the prices of both kits are not very far apart. The DDR4 cost around $140 and the DDR5 cost about $180, which is a significant difference if you're looking at the percentage, it's around 30%. But when we're talking about a whole computer build and its budget, $40 difference is not going to be the major difference in parts that you're going to get. Our card here is the NVIDIA beautiful Founders Edition 3090. Yes, I know I'm talking about a certain budget, but in order to give the processor and the RAM the maximum load to understand how they are affected, we're going to test in different resolutions from 180p until 4K in a variety of games, synthetic benchmarks, and software for content creators to get the full image and range of uses. The motherboard for the DDR4 tests is the MSI Z790 Tomahawk, which is not a sucker at all, and it can happily deliver the goods with 16 phases of 90 amps for the processor. Overall, the Tomahawk in this generation of boards is a serious board that is suitable for edge builds as any other motherboard. And as for the DDR5, we're going to use Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Master Motherboard. Beyond that, all the other parts such as cooling for the processor, the SSD drive and power supply were exactly identical. I want to start with the synthetic benchmark that gave us very similar results. The biggest difference that we're going to see here is less than 3% in favor of DDR5 in Cinebench R15 test. But in most tests, the difference in performance is below 1% and this is not always in favor of DDR5. But again, the difference here is quite negligible anyway. This time we expanded Blender test to test also the processor separately and the video card separately. The main reason here is that if you're really going to work professionally, you will most likely be working on the GPU and we wanted to understand if there is any difference in each of the other modes. And in all the tests here, we also saw a difference of less than half of a percent. When you look at Adobe software, the, the picture finally changes and shows us the advantage of DDR5. The main difference is in the Premiere software, which shows us a massive improvement of 20%. In Photoshop, the improvement is much more modest, but still reaches around 7%, with the smallest difference being 3% in favor of DDR5 in After Effects. And now for the most interesting part, gaming. The trends of negligible difference here continues. In most titles and resolution, we see that the difference is usually in a few percentage range. So even if there is a difference of 5%, I don't think that if you're going to play at 100 or 105 FPS, you're, going, you're really going to notice the difference. And the biggest difference that we see here is in Forza Horizon 5, where DDR4 leads in performance in almost 9% in QHD resolution without any ray tracing. But if you turn ray tracing on, DDR5 wins almost in 9%, which is exactly the opposite. And one more difference that is worth looking at is that at 4K, the difference is almost 5% in favor of DDR5. In general, I think that I should mention two important things here. The first is that Intel are completely the good guys here, even though you can't expect it to continue like this for generations to come. Simply having the option to choose between DDR4 and DDR5 open doors for those who have a little difficulty with this cost. And the second thing is really simple. You can see that the difference in performance and in price is no longer that large. But if you are a creator who uses Adobe mainly for video editing, you definitely have a good reason to choose DDR5 instead of DDR4. 
Therefore, I can finally say that going to the DDR5 route is much more worthwhile for you. Especially if you look at the future that you can upgrade to a much faster DDR5 kit and improve your performance. So what do you think about DDR5 or DDR4? What's going to be your next build if you have a really old computer and you're considering buying right now a new computer? Please let me know down in the comments. I'd love, we love to read all of your comments and we reply to all of them. Thank you very much. I was Galapus. Have a great day. Goodbye.